This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I am Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And uh, we're going to talk to you about some murder today, guys. Mm. I'm glad it's not my night. I'm a little bit tired and I don't have any monster energy or uh, four locos or anything on hand. I don't think I've ever had a monster energy drink. I have not ever had a monster energy drink, but if I were to have one, it, tonight would be the night. <laughs> but I don't. So Sweet. Instead, I just get to kick back and let you take me on the fucking rolling boat ride of terror and yeah. horror. Well, I decided that I was going to take a break from murder. Yeah. And that it would be less awful. But it turns out that this crime is it, it's bad. So so it's not a murder, but it's still a horror, horror, horror terror boat yeah. ride. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the serial rapist and kidnapper, John Jamelski. Oh, fuck. Great. Mm -hmm. Damn it. So all the names in the story have been changed to protect the identities of the victims. Okay. And obviously, big, big old trigger warning for sexual assault. I'm not going to go into any graphic details, um, but there is a lot of assault. April 9th, 2003 started out as any normal day for Terry Carnan Cross. She went to her job at RM Returnables, a recycling depot in the town of Manlius, New York, just 10 miles east of Syracuse, where she spent her time in the front office keeping the depot in order. When she answered the phone that day, she had no idea it would lead to the end of one man's 15-year reign of terror. Yeah, get him already, yes! When Terry picked up the call, a woman on the other end said her sister, we're going to call her Sam, had just called her from the depot. The woman explained that Sam had been missing since October and had just told her that she had been abducted and needed help. Mm. So she's in the depot. Yes. Mm. When Sam hung up abruptly, her sister called back to figure out where she was and see if she could get someone to help her. Terry had just been talking to a regular customer, 68-year-old John Jamelski, who had a young teenager with him, someone Terry had never seen before. Mm. During their brief conversation, Jamelski had told Terry that he was running errands and they were heading to the local pet shop. The name of the shop was Pets Are People Too. (laughs) Very, totally inaccurate, but also (laughs) fully support that. Yes. Uh, Which was just down the street. So Terry hung up with Sam's sister and called the owner of the pet shop, who she happened to be good friends with, to tell him to keep an eye open for Jamelski. Oh my god! I know. The owner said that he was actually still in the shop. He played it safe and didn't confront him. He waited for the older man to leave, and then he called police. Oh, shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Sam's sister had made the 10-mile drive from her house to the recycling depot to see if she could find her sister. The police had also arrived, and while they were going through the details of what was happening, Sam called her sister's cell phone again. Mm -mm. Sam managed to sneak to another phone, but still didn't know where she was. She started describing the things around her, and someone heard Sam say, quote, yellow, and, quote, dodge. Mm. And they knew that she was at the local Dodge dealership, where they had just noticed a bright yellow Dodge neon car for sale. Mm -mm. police rushed to the dealership luckily Jamelski and Sam were still there Jamelski was arrested on the spot and brought to the station for questioning Sam who was only 16 years old told police that she had initially decided to run away from her home in Syracuse to get out of town she decided to hitchhike the first ride she accepted was from Jamelski damn it Instead of helping her get out of town as promised, he drove her to his home and locked her into his underground bunker in his backyard. Oh, no bunkers, no. Mm -hmm. He kept her there for six months, where he would beat, torture, and rape her until he thought she was completely under his control. Oh, God. Sam worked hard to gain his trust, and Jamelski took a special liking to her. 
He started letting her come upstairs into his home, but he was careful to keep all the doors and windows locked so she couldn't escape. He eventually felt confident enough with his control over Sam to take her out. They went bowling at least once. On April 3rd, he took her to a karaoke bar where people noticed the odd couple. He was a 68-year-old white man, and she was a 16-year-old black girl. Oh my god. But no one confronted him or asked any questions, which emboldened him even more. What a pile of torture for her to just be so close to freedom and be too scared to do anything about it. Yeah. A few days later, he allowed Sam to come with him to run errands, where she managed to sneak away and call her sister twice. Now she was free. Oh, thank God. John Jamelski was born in Fayetteville, New York in 1935 and would have spent his life there. So this guy, like going to these bars, he was a regular. He lived in this mm-hmm. town. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Growing up, he was described as quiet and withdrawn, barely speaking to anyone. He was known for his poor hygiene and terrible acne. Kids called him Germ Jamelski. Oh, God. And said he, quote, went through school sideways. <laughs> He didn't do well academically and wasn't athletic, which was particularly important at the time. Yeah. He, teachers considered him an underachiever. After high school, he graduated from Morrisville State College in 1955 with a degree in watchmaking, which uh, his ha- just so happened to be his father's career. There's a t- watchmaking in the 50s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, there was in 1955. I would like to pursue that yeah, now that I know that it existed. Seriously. And a few years after that, he married a school teacher named Dorothy in 1959. They would go on to have three sons and seem to live a normal suburban life. Jeez. Jamelski worked as a handyman and a carpenter and was known to be extremely frugal. He was known as the local bottle collector, spending hours collecting bottles and cans from the side of the road. Uh, Even at the time of his arrest, he had a collection of over 13,000 bottles in his home. What? Yep. They said they covered almost every available surface in the house. Holy shit. Hoarder style. Wow. So he wasn't cashing them in to build his bunker. He was just keeping them. Well, he was that. Like, you know, he was Sam first alerted police at the bottle. Oh, right, right. Like the recycling depot. Right. He would badger the local librarians until they would agree to clip the coupons out of the magazines and newspapers that they received for the library. No. To give to him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Ballsy. I know. Uh, Because Jamelski was an only child, he inherited a large number of antique clocks and his childhood home when his parents died. He moved his family into the home, sold the clocks, and then used the money to invest in a large amount of property in California. Hmm. This would eventually make him a millionaire. What? Mm-hmm. Yep. So he's he's going around like collecting all the bottles and having these ladies clip the coupons when he's a millionaire. A millionaire. Wow. That's how the rich stay rich, man. I mm-hmm. swear. I swear. Seriously. His children described him as someone who liked to tell stories of his childhood, but these stories differed greatly from reality. He said that he was extremely popular in high school and a talented athlete. He would go on and on about all the girls he dated and how much they loved him. Mm. Perhaps this was his way of dealing with a painful history by rewriting it all together. In the 1980s, Jamelski had an open affair. I'm going to call it grooming Mm -hmm. with a teenager. He even brought her to family functions when his wife was present. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a lot of details, but this did pop up quite a bit. Oh, God. Yeah. In 1988, Dorothy became very ill and would spend 11 years bedridden until her death in 1999. After Dorothy became sick, this gave him plenty of free time to spend his days as he pleased. Instead of spending time golfing or fishing like other men his age, he decided to hunt for women instead. Jamelski targeted women he didn't believe would be missed. They were often runaways and were of all different ethnicities, mm-hmm. mostly going after women of color. Of course, of course, of course. Mm-hmm. In October 1988, Jamelski kidnapped his first known victim. We're going to call her Kim. Not much is known about Kim or her time she spent with him. 
She was 14 years old at the time of her abduction, and he kept her for over two years. You're kidding me. She said that Jamelski knew she had a younger brother. She doesn't know how he know- knew that, and threatened to kill him if she ever tried to escape or told anybody about him. Mm. When he kidnapped her, he first forced her to live at the bottom of a well on his property. No. Mm-hmm. While he, with the help of at least one son, built an underground bunker. You're kidding? The kid helped him? Yup. No. Yeah. The bunker consisted of two 12 by 12 foot concrete rooms with seven foot high ceilings. So not small. Uh-huh. It was accessible through a steel door hidden behind some shelves in his garage. Behind the door was an eight foot long tunnel that you had to crawl on your hands and knees to get through. Ugh, oh my God. This led to a smaller, quote, entryway room and another steel door. Oh my God. To get into the two main rooms where the victims were kept, you had to climb down a small three rung ladder that would then bring you into the main area. So if you were in the main room, the door, the entrance would be up on yep. like at the ceiling, basically. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And I hate it. I hate everything about it. I'm mm-hmm. super claustrophobic and I couldn't even be the captor because I would not be able to get through that fucking... No. Ugh. Yeah, it's awful. He told his son that it was a storm shelter. He would use it to store emergency supplies. Oh my God. So the, it's, there was no indication that his sons had any idea what was happening. Right, sure. FYI. Yeah, and why would you? Right. And also back then, like they weren't that part was a of thing. It. Yeah, yeah, right, right yeah. totally. But instead, he furnished the room with a plastic bucket to be used as a toilet, foam cushions for a bed, and an old bathtub that could be filled with water from a garden hose. Mm. He had a chain bolted to the floor that connected to an ankle bracelet. Oh my god. Just the the idea of putting building a room to keep people in. You put so much time and energy into building a room to keep a person in it. Yes. I d- I don't don't like it. It. Yes. I don't like it. No. So once completed, he forced Kim into the bunker and raped and tortured her daily. <laughs> Her family reported her missing, but police believed she'd run away and didn't spend any time on her case. Not one second. Nope. <laughs> it's, there's going to be a lot of that court, so just buckle in. <laughs> yeah. Just, just look. God, mm-hmm. just nope. look. Nope. Her family was shocked when she suddenly returned home in 1990. She said that one day Jamelski decided to put her in his car and drive her home. He reminded her that he would kill her and her family if she told anyone what happened. They never reported her ordeal to the police. You're kidding me. No, two years of being raped and tortured. Oh my god, oh my god. I'm gonna have a panic attack. I know. Holy shit. I know. It's fucking awful. And this is how inept the police were. That they were so, like, they're like, what? They're not gonna do anything. So we're not even gonna tell them that she, our our teenage daughter. Was, it gets worse. Just <laughs> it's so awful. It's just not that hard to do your job. You don't no. even have to do it like super well. Just do it. Just do it a little bit. Yeah, or at least do it a regular amount. Like right. I would love Pretend if you did to it. care. Yeah, like yeah. it would be great if you fucking pulled a Vermont and followed mm-hmm. the evidence and mm-hmm. found the girl mm-hmm. before she was tortured and raped for two years. But mm-hmm. oh my yeah. god. Yep, that would be great. There's just no excuse for that. That's your no. that's your job. Your job is to keep people safe and just do your fucking job. Mm-hmm. And remember, he did this for 15 years. <laughs> and this is the start. In 1995, Jamelski abducted a 14-year-old girl who had run away from home. Mm. We're going to call her Jen. This time, Jamelski lured Jen to his home, saying he needed an important package delivered anonymously and promised to pay her well if she did. Mm. On the way to his house, he had her duck down, saying he didn't want anyone to see her because of the importance of the package. This also kept her from seeing where she was going. Uh-huh. Once they got to his home, he told her the package was inside the bunker. She would have to go in to get it. Oh, no, don't do it. Once she was inside the main room, he closed and locked the door behind her. Oh, my God. He kept Jen for two years. Oh, my God. He controlled her every move. And raped her almost every day. When he was done with her, he put a blindfold over her eyes and drove her 
to her mother's apartment and dropped her off. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. She described how it took her a minute to get her bearings. Like she got on, you know, she didn't realize right away that she was right in front of her mom's house. Right. When she took her blindfold off. Despite threats to her family, she went to the police and told them her story. She even offered a detailed description of her kidnapper. But when police learned of her previous drug use, they questioned the credibility of her story and quickly dropped the investigation. <laughs> the world gets to explode now. I have to kill everyone. I'm sorry. No. There's just that is so unacceptable that we all have to die. Yep, I know, and it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh it just like gets worse. They're so. It's uh, yeah. Oh, the amount of rage! Like I need to start over and get into politics, and then imprison everybody who does shit like that who just yep. lets horrible monsters free yep. purely because they're fucking bigots mm-hmm. slash lazy mm-hmm. yeah oh so we got God. women of color teenagers oh runaways and they come with these I and mean, i'm sure there was like evidence on their body and like of course scars and of course she hadn't she'd been underground in a bunker for two years like she emaciated and filthy and they're like, huh? Drugs. Like, fuck you. It's psychotic. It is yeah. psychotic. Yep. For weeks after she was freed from captivity, Jen saw Jamelski drive by her apartment to keep tabs on her. Mm-mm. Yep. Nope. Shortly after Jen's release, he abducted a 53-year-old woman, Jane, in August of 1997. She was a Vietnamese refugee who barely spoke English. <sighs> This time, he attacked her on the street and forced her into his car. He then drove her to an abandoned house where he raped her. Afterward, he put her back into the car and tied her to some flattened cardboard boxes and drove her to his bunker. He raped her often and had her do chores with him around his house. He put a TV in the bunker for her to watch and insisted she sing for him because he liked it. (laughs) He released her less than a year after her abduction in May of 1998. He dropped her off at a Greyhound bus station and gave her $50. Oh my god. She called the police right away, but nothing came of it. She said they didn't believe her, but the police said they fully investigated all possible leads, but couldn't find any evidence or a suspect. Prove it, prove it, prove it. I want to see receipts. I want to see everything. Mm-hmm. <sighs> On May 11th, 2001, Jamelski found his next victim. We'll call her Susan. She was a 26-year-old mother of two who was walking in downtown Syracuse while she was high on LSD. Oh, no. And she got kidnapped on LSD? Mm-hmm. <gasps> One of, I, I read LSD and others said that she was just walking to a friend's house and didn't mention the drugs, but I, I, I hope. I cannot. I mean, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm so sorry for her if it's true. It's oh just, my god! I can't imagine anything worse. No, I can't. I, I couldn't. If I got kidnapped on marijuana, Nothing. yeah. I mean, <laughs> but yes, like LSD. Oh my uh, god! Uh, no, terrifying. Yeah, the weather was bad, and Jamelski offered her a ride, and she accepted. He took her back to his bunker. Uh, same old story, where he raped her every day. She would later tell police that she would try to fight Jamelski off. But when she did, he would burn her with cigars. Ugh. One burn was so bad that she developed an abscess on her lower back. Ugh. Jamelski told her that he was a part of an underground human trafficking organization and the police were in on it. So if she ever went to them, they would do nothing. Which at this point, I fully believe. Yeah, like, yeah. That's 100%. not an exaggeration. No. He, yeah. Whether or not he had anything to do with it. Yes, mm-hmm. he was being protected. That piece yep. of shit. All of those pieces of shit. Susan talked Jamelski into letting her write home to her family to let them know that she was okay. He made her tell them that she was in a drug rehab program. Oh my god. Her family had reported her missing, but the case went nowhere. Once they got the letter from her, the police dropped her case, thinking that she was just in rehab. Jamelski only kept Susan for two months. He blindfolded her, and only. I mean, I shouldn't, I don't even, I just caught that, like, only two months. But right, but can, compared, compared to his other victims. <sighs> he blindfolded her and dropped her off at her mother's home. Susan went to the police to tell them of her abduction, but they didn't believe her. Okay, so this is all kind of in the same area, right? Yes. And 
this is now four women, five women who have four mm-hmm. who have that we reported know abductions, right? Mm-hmm. That have reported abductions, and they're like I'm being kept in this bunker. Yep. And they're like, no, nah, you were just in re. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just I didn't get any sense that they did anything this whole time, like at all. Just didn't care. Or we're getting paid off by this mm-hmm. millionaire to something. Yes. Let them. I mean, that's the yes. only logical explanation. Yes. Yep. They showed her the letter that she wrote to her family and used it as evidence that she was lying. God. She went to the hospital to have a rape kit done, but since she hadn't been raped for several days prior to her release, the kit showed no signs of rape. <laughs> so Susan gave police a description of Jamelski's car, saying it was a tan 1974 Mercury Comet. Police searched for registered vehicles matching this description and came up with one hit. But when this car was ruled out as being the one belonging to her abductor, the police closed the case, despite the Mercury Comet being available from 1971 to 1977. They didn't search any other year of that make and model. Oh, so they, no. she said 97, or she said 74. They searched for 74s, and that was it. And how would she ever know it was a 74 anyway, right? you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so then get this. It turns out that the car that Jamelski drove was a tan 1975 oh Mercury Comet. Oh, my God. And they didn't no. check. She was one year off. I don't even know if my car is, most of the time, it's like a Toyota or a Honda. I honestly, I have to think about 100% it. 100% do not know the, day, the year of my car. 100%. No. I think no. it's 2017. And- this Not amazing woman sure was able that. to like pinpoint it to the year. God, like, one year off, and they're like, no, no, not seventy four. Like, I, Ew, couldn't I, possibly. You know. Yeah, no. And other police forces, like you'd say tan, and they look at all of the colors and all. Of, like, you can't. Yes. Oh God, they're just yeah. idiots. My next case is granted it was in Canada, but <laughs> these guys like they just didn't stop looking for evidence. Anything like it's just not that hard. Like, what else do you right. have to do? It's yes. your fucking job. Your job. Just do your job. Yes. Just do it. Yep. The Syracuse police even went on Dateline NBC after Jamelski was arrested and criticized Susan for giving them insufficient information <gasps> and for writing the letter saying that she didn't help her own case. Oh my God. I know, man. <laughs> I'm going to fucking vomit. And I know that this stuff still happens so regularly, but if that's not such a fucking 1990s. Well, this is, Keep yeah, early 2000s at this point, but yeah. Yeah. God. Jamelski abducted his final victim in October 2002 and was arrested six months later after she was able to call her sister at the recycling depot. God. Once Jamelski was in custody, he told detectives he decided to kidnap women after his wife was bedridden and could no longer satisfy his sexual urges. I mean... Vomit, vomit, vomit. I... Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. There's so many things you can do short of building a fucking oh bunker God. and putting other human beings down in it and torturing them and yeah, raping well, them. Well, not if you think women are literal objects for your <sighs> fucked up I desires. have so much rage in my body. Yep. See, this is what I mean. You think you're taking a break from murder? This is not any better. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> nope. Silly me. He described himself as, quote, a little bit crazy and called his bunker the, quote, party room. Um, Miley Cyrus is a little bit crazy. You're Mm -hmm. a fucking full-blown monster. Like, actual, the devil is inside of you. Yes. Uh, He showed no remorse for his crimes and told police he was, quote, buddies with his victims Mm. and chained them up, quote, only a tiny little. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Mm Mm-hmm. He went so far as saying he saw himself as, quote, a tremendous influence on them. He believed the women and girls weren't kidnapped victims because he never demanded cash ransoms. <laughs> like, I mean, it's I know a good that you point. were born in the 30s or yeah. everybody, yeah. but like, yeah. It's, it's a good point. You can take people all you want as long as you don't ask for other people to give you money to get them back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, what? What the fuck? What is, I don't know what he thinks kidnapping is, if it's not exactly what he did. Like, I don't know. In an interview with MSNBC, Jamelski said that he should not be punished for what he did. And once arrested, he thought he would only spend a couple of days in jail, pay a fine, or perform community service. 
Oh, God. It took many days after his arrest for his lawyers to make it clear to him that taking women and holding them in a dungeon is kidnapping. Jesus, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Jamelski's blue ranch-style home was much more simple than those in his wealthy, well-to-do suburban neighborhood. And it's one of those cases where I think their house, the ranch house was like original to the property and then they sold off the property and people bought it. And so mm -hmm. if you look at, there's some pictures of like overhead neighborhoods of his house with these like giant mansions <laughs> next door and like this like crappy piece of property. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's one of those, uh -huh. like you can picture it. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find the picture and post it, but um, definitely out of place. Right. He built a tall wooden fence all along his property line and then planted evergreen trees that grew to be over 20 feet tall all, all along the fence mm -hmm. for added privacy. So not only do you have this like dinky squatty house, but you got this crazy ass fence and trees all around it. <laughs> it's really a sight to see. The yard was full of broken down machinery and strange yard decorations. One was described as a, quote, 10-foot-high wooden structure, a cross between a totem pole and a crucifix, with a replica of a human skull on top. What? Yep. So he's not trying Yard to be art. conspicuous at all. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Ray, I don't know. He's just like... He's just nuts. Yeah. Gnomes be damned. I've got my 10-foot totem pole <laughs> skull thing. Just gotta, I just gotta express myself. <laughs> <laughs> When detectives searched the inside of Jamelski's home, they found it filled with items of little to no value, including his huge collection of cans and bottles. He had two decades worth of various papers and receipts. They found hundreds of unused overnight envelopes. Police thought Jamelski might have been using them to distribute photos of his victims to people around the world. Oh no. They also found unused federal tax forms that include pictures of other missing teens. <gasps> And I couldn't find more about that. It was just like one little blurb. Yeah, of course uh, you didn't because the cops didn't do their fucking job. <laughs> right. So they didn't like, follow no. up on it. Yeah, pretty much. Once inside the bunker, police found the walls covered in graffiti, including religious phrases and peace signs. Uh. A crucifix was found hanging by the door next to the bright red words, peace to all who enter here. Oh, no. Uh, also on the wall was the word hate. The next one uh, also says, ready to ruckus, so bring on the pain. I don't like this at all. Nothing about it. Yep. And on another wall, it says, quote, wall of thugs. Is this guy schizophrenic? Like something. Right? There's something seriously yeah. wrong with him. Yes. Yeah. They found the bathtub in the middle of the room. When you pulled the plug to the tub, the water would run out onto the floor. There wasn't any kind of, like, drain or pipes. Uh -huh. Because of this, the room was damp and really moldy. Yeah, I bet. There was a clock radio, a small dorm room fridge, and microwave. They found an aluminum pipe that allowed warm air into the bunker from the house furnace. Detectives found multiple calendars used by the victims to mark each day with the letters B, S, and T. Investigators would later discover that these letters stood for the days the women were either raped, S, bathed, B, or brushed their teeth, T. Mm -mm. The calendar spanned 15 years. His victims would later tell detectives that Jamelski would force them to keep records in these calendars as a form of controlling them. Uh. Police also found several home videos. One showed Jamelski dancing, singing, and exercising with one of his victims. He often told his captives that he was part of the local sheriff's department and would show them a fake badge that he'd found on the street years earlier to help keep up the ruse. Mm -hmm. He told them that he was under certain bosses in the department that were making him kidnap and rape his victims. <laughs> he said that less his victims fought, making the daily assaults, quote, easier, the faster his bosses might let the women go. Oh my god. In one of the videotapes, you can hear the victim pleading with these make-believe bosses to let her go, saying it would be better if she were home. Oh my god. Police asked anyone who had been kidnapped by Jamelski to please come forward, which is when the four additional victims came to light. Who knows how many more there could be. Because uh, you know those fucking cops are like, C come to us, please. Can you tell us if you this has happened? And when nobody else, they were like, okay, case closed. Oh yeah. 
you know, and if anybody comes forward now, they're going to be like, well, you should have told us sooner. You didn't do your job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a uh, million percent. Yep. And there was some like spans of years between these victims. And so, you know, there were more. There had yes. to be. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're terrified or they're dead mm-hmm. yes. or whatever. Yeah. They fucking left the country because I would have... <sighs> Or is the fucking cop bosses even make believe? Is it a real right. thing? Like this yes. makes me feel so conspiratorial because, mm-hmm. I, like, I just there's just no other way for me to unwrap my mind around right. doing such a shitty job of protecting these women and their yep. families. Yeah, young girls coming to you and saying, "I've been held captive for two years, and you just don't care." I can't. Yeah, it's like Epstein I can't imagine shit. You know? Anything, yes, any more, anything more evil than that. No, nothing more evil than that. I like I <sighs> like Jamelski, not to excuse his behavior, but clearly had some mental health issues. Yes. Um. The so what? What's what are the cops' excuses? Well, and I think about this constantly, and it's just not that hard to be kind. You know, mm-hmm. it's just not that hard to like take care of other people. It's just right. not. Mm-hmm. Unless you bonked your head or you were born with fucking personality disorder, you don't have any excuse. Mm-hmm. Just slow down and be good and be kind. Well, especially when these, in like Syracuse, New York, and you're a white police officer, dude. Like, you have it all. You have everything. Like, yeah. Take your fucking job seriously. Yeah. Help I, people that really, really need it. Like, these what, women really needed their help and they didn't yeah. fucking give it to them. Yeah. Not even for a second. Yep. Over and over and over and over again. Yeah. That's like what part evil. of your brain is missing that you can't, like this woman comes in and you can't see how desperately they need that help and then right. you just dismiss them. Yes. Yeah. It's so, it's just bullshit. Yes. It makes me so mad. Yeah. Yes. It's to the point of feeling like I could like vomit. It's yeah. that level of anger. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Jamelski was charged with multiple counts of kidnapping, rape, and sodomy. During a press conference, Jamelski's defense attorney said, quote, This is not a silence of the lambs scenario. Mm. There's less here than meets the eye. They haven't dug up any bodies and it doesn't look like they're about to. So from the get go, he's like, it's not that big of a deal. There aren't any dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yep. When asked about the bunker, his attorney implied that it was just a survival shelter. (laughs) After only two months in jail, 68-year-old Jamelski agreed to a plea deal and pleaded guilty to five counts of kidnapping. None of his victims attended the sentencing hearing, but many of their family and friends did. The sentencing judge told Jamelski he should die in prison, quote, You are a sick coward. You are an evil man. You are a kidnapper and rapist, a master manipulator of people, and the truth that your reign of terror is over. Yes. Jamelski's last victim wrote a letter to her attacker saying, quote, You are the sickest man I have ever known. Every time you came to the door, I wanted to kill you. Another victim told the court a part of her died in the bunker and wrote about crying every night for her baby, fearing that she'd never see her child again. Mm-mm. Another said that she was plagued by nightmares and by the pain of knowing her children thought she was dead, adding, quote, what if he gets out and is able to begin another regime of terror to other women? Yeah, and he was. <sighs> Jamelski replied with tears, telling the judge, quote, I'm sorry for what I did and how I affected everyone. God bless all of them. You don't get to bless them. No, nope, you, you don't get to, get do, get anything. to do anything. The judge then ordered him to sell off all of his property and possessions. The money then would be split equally between his five victims. That's good. Yeah, not enough. No, God, no. But that's good that that was an additional stipulation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They say that each victim got at least six figures. Uh, Yeah. From that. Good. And And then then they should, the police need to go and quadruple that yep i didn't see any reports that anybody sued the police but they sure Mm -hmm. should they sure as fuck should absolutely so after telling him to sell all his possessions uh, the judge sentenced him to 18 years to life in prison that's not enough time no i mean luckily he was like 68 or 69 at this point but right still Still, symbolically it's just not enough time i'm glad the judge said what he or she she said about 
him and like gave the victim some voices but yeah. yeah that just doesn't seem like nearly enough time no one month after his sentencing the town of dewitt destroyed the underground bunker on jamelski's property they hoped it would give his victim some closure and comfort knowing it was gone mm-hmm. john jamelski was recently up for parole in december of 2020 he's now 85 years old in a written statement to the parole board jamelski said that he should be let out of prison because he would often give his victims bubble baths. I, like, I'm blind from my <laughs> eyes rolling back. I know. What? I know. He also said that he should be let go because he didn't kill them. Oh, my God. He says that most cases like his probably end with the kidnapped victims being murdered. <laughs> to show how, quote, kind he was to his captives, he used one of his victims' own words. Uh, she wrote in a voluntary affidavit, quote, Whenever I wanted food, he got it for me. He got me McDonald's, Burger King, pizza, or even lasagna from Celebrity Diner. He gave me $210 when I was still in the basement the day he took me home. He gave it to me just so I wouldn't be broke. But the district attorney on the case sees the exchange of cash in a different light. Quote, He kept detailed notes, a calendar of the rapes these victims had to endure, he would say that he had sex with them this many times, so he had to pay them for that, but he also had to deduct room and board. Oh my god. Despite his lawyer's pleas to the parole board to let him out because of his age and medical conditions, they were not swayed and denied his parole. He will be eligible for parole again in December of 2022. He will be 87 years old. And if I was on the parole board, I'd be like, in an unprecedented turn of events, I'm going to give you exponentially more time right i know <laughs> yep so what we're all gonna do in december of 2022 is write to the syracuse prison <sighs> board fuck <laughs> yep so if that motherfucker go, gets to go be in florida and go sit in mm -hmm. fucking tampa or whatever no nope under no circumstance yep. i'll do that thing with some um, what's the case what's her the woman's name that was like basically dis figured and left by the side of the road and oh, lived. Oh, yeah. The very famous case that we all yes. know about and about yes. how when her attacker got out and the, the city like fucking raged so hard that mm -hmm. they had to keep him in police custody and like figure out a new town to put yes. him in and all the towns were like, nope. Nope. I'm not having weird. it. We'll do that. Yes. yes, we will do that because fuck that. Yep. Yep. And that's all I gotta say about that. That is <laughs> a plenty. I... Yeah. I Talk about not knowing how to react to a case, man. That is too much and mm -hmm. too terrible. Mm -hmm. Too terrible. Well, and how have we never heard about it? I Well, yeah. As I'm like racking my brain as you're talking, trying to remember if, that, if this is something that I've heard of. And no, it's not. Not even remotely. Yeah. And some of the more recent articles were bringing, like drawing parallels between Jamelski's case and uh, Ariel Castro. Right. And, but then I was like, still have never heard of it. You know, no. like, how, I just don't understand how some cases are the the news and others aren't. There's this white guy, this old white guy mm. kidnapping. And I just like, that's, it's, it's a big deal. That's a big deal. What he it's did was a fucking awful thing. And extremely big deal. Nobody cared for these victims from the get go, all through the whole thing through the trial through you know it's like yeah. this sounds like the community sort of rallied for them but like what they they did just nothing they get nothing <laughs> it makes no. me so mad so mad and it wasn't that long ago no Ugh. So, i'm so sorry to those victims and endless good job sorry. like fucking how amazing are you that you survived that shit i no, you know and no. I'm so sorry for what he took from them. And not only him, the fucking system. Yes. Like, to have to be re-traumatized and made to feel, like, less than nothing. Yes. I mean, you I know, just, by this yeah. fucking guy and then by the other fucking guys. Yes. You know, they're you get no... out of the fucking torture bunker and you're yes. like, oh my god, thank god I'm here. And then you go to the police officer and you're literally stuck in a different hell. Yeah, you're re-victimized like worse hell in some ways. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Just I shouldn't a, say that. A legal but. monster. Well, yeah, but it, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, the like, <laughs> level of insanity 
at least the actual monster, you get it. Because you're like, well, you're an actual monster. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here in your bunker and I'm going to hope that this turns out okay. But then you go to the police and they're supposed to be the good guys. There's Mm -hmm. nothing scarier to me. You know, it's like the hospital cases. You're in the place where the people are supposed to take care of you Mm -hmm. and they do the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. That's... I well, can't. then, like, doubling down and continuing to blame the victim later and, yeah. like, on television. Yes. <laughs> like, how fucked up are you? Like, how... You're a special, special devil. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm ready to burn the patriarchy <laughs> down right now. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm like, shaking and kind of nauseous and sweaty. It's yep. too much. It's too much. Yep. And it's just not that hard. That's the thing. It's mm-hmm. not like you're asking people to fucking learn how to do round off back handsprings or something. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Like, if you're like, and then the cop do. couldn't, he couldn't do a, he couldn't do a round off back handspring. And so the perpetrator got away again. I'd be like, fuck man, I can't do one either. So I can't really I blame it. them for, right. yeah. Like that's a yeah. lot. That's a lot to ask. No, all you have to do is be fucking kind. You don't even right. have to do Take some notes. Collect Ugh. some evidence. <laughs> yes. Okay. Say, oh my God, I'm sorry for your, like yeah. this, this happened to you. Let's yes. figure it out together. Yeah. I can't do anything about it because there are fucking sexual bosses in right. the police department who mm-hmm are paid off and are also participating in this, Mm -hmm. but I'm sorry. Right. So that's enough. That's plenty. Oh my God. Yeah. So, well, way to uncover that case that should be on the fucking forefront of every single person's mind in America at all times. Yeah. But isn't that's right. Completely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're you're welcome. (laughs) There's your break from murder. (laughs) The end. (laughs) <laughs> Take me back to murder. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, yeah. I've yeah. said enough fucks, and I've also don't think I can keep. I think I'll pass out if I keep being this mad. So, <laughs> can we abruptly transition to yes. names? Yep. You guys, just when I think like the name spigot of names is gonna. Slow to a trickle. No, no, no. Mm-mm. Because you're angels and you're hilarious and you're <laughs> so thoughtful to send us to keep sending us your messages and your names. Um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, apparently, there's a New Hampshire congressman named Dick Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Uh, one of our listeners grandmother's name was Eunice and she married someone with the last name Eichel so her name is Eunice Eichel <laughs> that was that was one for me that was like I think that the um, listener wrote it out for us she did yes I would not have it, gotten there no, the way no. that it, you read it I was yeah <laughs> But it's so funny. It's so Eunice f- Eichel. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, God. This one I love because she explained that in the show, Holy Moly, which is Extreme Putt Putt, <laughs> season two. <laughs> I think it was on Hulu. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, love I love that there's an Extreme Putt Putt show called Holy Moly. Holy Moly. So in season two of Holy Moly, there's Tanner Beard. Like last week we had. <laughs> Harry. Harry Beard. Yeah. This year's this week's Tanner Beard. Um, speaking of Harry's, there's somebody's. I think it's also someone's grandfather or uncle, Harry Deal, as in <laughs> big Harry Deal. <laughs> uh, we got another Dick this week, Dick Seaman. Which <laughs> yes, please. I, yeah. <laughs> like if you have a, if your last name is Seaman, that like, you should just be Dick. One, Dick, two, Dick, three, Dick, four, you know, like yes, George Foreman, Dick right. Seaman, the 50th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or uh, Rod. Rod would fit. Yeah, Rod Seaman, Dick Seaman. Uh, <laughs> last night, Laura and I were watching something and there was a producer. Oh, the rhythm section. Don't watch that movie. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Like the rhythm section, like uh, it's a dancing movie. to the beat? No, it's actually about um, kind of a bad vigilante, like a really weak vigilante story where Blake Lively's parents get blown up on an airplane oh. and this journalist comes to her and she's 
like a sex worker and uh-huh. she's on drugs and he's like i need your help like, i don't it's it's like the suspension of disbelief for this movie is so unbelievable yeah and then she goes to some really weak training with jude law and then they're like okay time to go out and ca- catch this terrorist by yourself i don't know it's so bad wow. um rhythm section there's rhythm section but there's a producer i think it was a producer laura and i both went <gasps> at the same time because her name is barbara broccoli oh my god <laughs> Uh-oh. Broccoli might be my new favorite. Like Barbara Broccoli. <laughs> I mean, Cindy Pancake is still, yes. it's just so fun to say Cindy Pancake, but yes, Barbara Broccoli Bar- and Barbara Cinda broccoli. Pa- Cindy Pancake live in was the same town. spelled like broccoli? Yeah, it's a, just wow. Barbara, which is a great name, Barbara on its own. Barbara yes. Broccoli. Wow. And the last one is Candy Corn, spelled <laughs> C-H-O-R-N. Candy Corn. Candy Corn. <laughs> Do we know if that was a married name or a, her given name? I don't know that we know that information. God, I hope it was what her parents gave her. It's a gift for a lifetime. I, see, I'm torn because it's like your parents are great. Or that's awesome if your parents gave it to you. But I feel like it's the universe's magic if they make you fall in love with somebody who has your perfect yes. combo. You know what I mean? Yes. I love believing the universe's magic that they would yes. bring like Candy Johnson and... Jeremiah corn together to make candy corn. Oh man. It's so good. I love those. (laughs) I really do. I love them so much. Unicycle. (laughs) Unicycle. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. Uh, So I was getting set up here to record tonight and I was thinking my thoughts like I do. You know what came in my mind out of nowhere? What? The word poofus. Oh boy! I know. So I just wanted to. Poofus was more of a you thing <laughs> yes. in high school. Well, right. our whole my whole so in junior high, I made a best friend, and her mother called the vagina the poofus. <laughs> and so that we all, I think, like everybody in my grade, called it the poofus as a yeah. result. Um. So I just was like, is that was that just one specific? person was it your friend's Uh mom who said that right has anyone ever like did your mom listeners did did your mom call the vagina a poofus yeah that (laughs) has ever been said i wrote a poem about it yeah later in like early in high school which my friends then wrote into a country song (laughs) do you Um, remember how it goes kentucky kentucky (laughs) kentucky kentucky no, I never heard the song. I just heard te- I've just heard tell. Tales, yeah. Kentucky, Kentucky, home of my poofus. What are you doing? Don't feel me up, doofus. <laughs> um, I hope you don't think you're going to get sex. This cattle's de poofist, so hurt him out, Tex. <laughs> when I okay, it always takes me a minute. Uh, when I was just five, my mom took it away. Sent it off to the Museum of Famous, and now it's there to stay. <laughs> they encased it in glass. Wait, they encased they cast it in gold and wait. Okay, they encased it in glass and cast it in gold to the Museum of the Famous, was to whom it was sold. That's how it goes. <laughs> so when I'm much older and a huge movie star, and I do frontal nudity, but there's nothing down there. People all over from St. Pe- from St. Peter to Rufus will go to Kentucky to gaze at my poofus. <laughs> Fourteen God years old. <laughs> damn your recall, Courtney. Well, it's one of those things that comes up like every three years. I have to recite it so <laughs> there you are <laughs> i have had some practice it's hard to remember the order of things i did miss it up a little bit to, to not to the she sent it off to kentucky now it's there to say but <sighs> speaking of a magical universe i really i have no i haven't thought of that word in like i don't know but it's just, <laughs> yeah. boing, the universe was like <laughs> talk about the poofus well it's so. because you're raising sons now and yeah. I hope to God you're not referring to it as the poofus. Oh, or no, we maybe are, you for should. sure. Maybe you should. <laughs> uh, no, speaking of raising sons, my three-year-old, I, we've been talking about birds and the bees and body parts and whatnot. 
so talking about his body parts and how he has testicles and um <laughs> i <laughs> he, we're having we had had that conversation and then time had passed you know maybe later in the day and he's looking at me just thinking his thoughts and he's like mommy where are your testicles and i said well honey i don't have any testicles and he sat there and he thought about it he said hmm, that's okay mommy you'll grow some when you get older <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for Thanks, the vote buddy. of confidence, Thanks, kid. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say tonight when he was getting ready for bed? Oh, God, I had to write it down. Uh, I'll mess it up if I don't read it. <laughs> he's taking his clothes off, getting ready to put his pajamas on. <laughs> he's like kicking his pants. He said, See you next time, pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan and I looked at each other like, Yeah, you will. <laughs> See you. See you See next, next time, time pants. pants. <laughs> God, I have the same aggressive feelings towards pants. I hate pants. They're my least, mm-hmm. well, socks are my least favorite clothes, but I hate pants. See you next time, pants. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, God, I mean, it's like nonstop with him right now. It's every word out of his mouth is just like, it's killing me. He's adorable. Well, Sadie yeah. sent me a picture today of him holding a in sync magazine like a vintage in oh, sync magazine See, i already forgot about that brought it over to her and said hey mom will you read me this very cool book <laughs> thinking it was the birds and the bees book but it was yeah. in sync magazine <laughs> yeah he's so confused we opened it and he was like where are the body parts i was like no honey this is in sync why are we oh we got you guys got it at like a free library box or something right i think you were part of that no i think ryan discovered it so i have no idea uh, where... you know like those boxes where you get the books right you know course. people put there yeah oh my god yeah picture. you're right no that yeah yep i think you might be right your oldest and i fished it out of one yeah he thought dad daddy would really really think it was cool so now we have this in sync boy band magazine fan what do they call it it's like a fan fanzine uh, something anyway well yep it's not you're not gonna learn about the birds and the bees from jt and joey fatone is he in that in NSYNC, Probably, or is he I think so. Backstreet Boys. I'm a little yeah. too old to know. He may be Backstreet. Yeah, I'm, I am too. Who else? Lance Bass. Mm-hmm. He might that be in sync. Guy with the creepy black hair. Yeah, that guy. Oof. No bueno. Mm-hmm. He also might be Backstreet Boys. I really don't know. No. And then, and then One Direction came around, and mm, I was yeah. like, uh, "Why did not, why did boy bands not look like One Direction?" <laughs> you know like, like they we, always had yeah. one hot one like justin timberlake mm-hmm. or um fucking joey mcintyre and then the mm-hmm. rest of them were just like creepy uncles mm-hmm. and then have you seen one direction i mean you know my obsession with harry styles but well let me look i can't say i know them well enough to know how hot s- they are this, they're stunning i mean harry styles in particular but the rest of them too they're all good looking and i was like we were robbed Gen Z, Gen Z. That's why Gen Z is so good at life and taking down the patriarchy. Oh yeah, look at that. No, they're beautiful. They're like, beautiful. All of them. Every that's, one of I them. I think that's like the biggest difference is that they are. No, that's what I mean. We yes. get ripped off because look at these guys. Holy hubba, cow. hubba. Oh. I mean, Harry Styles just steals the show. You can't take your eyes off of him. But yeah. Wow. Ugh, I'm such a crush on Harry. You know, I don't know if I ever knew. I knew that you loved Harry Styles, but I don't think i ever knew until right this minute that he was in one direction <laughs> yeah i don't know where i thought he came from but he's uh he's now he's a fashion icon and um it, like ambiguously sort of sexual and gorgeous mm-hmm. and yummy and his albums are actually pretty good so it's good for him i know no good they for are him. beautiful ba- all bad of them. for the other three or four and not yeah. like hot and but like no, they're beautiful gorgeous. yes yeah. They're yeah. pretty. Yes. Huh. Well, I know. thanks for the education. Yeah, I was furious when I found out. And then Laura and I sat and watched a bunch of One Direction videos because they're so pretty and we're all mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anything else we should tell our listeners that we love so much? We love them so much. And no, I think that's all I got. Okay. Oh, uh, you know what? We have our one year anniversary coming up. <gasps> right. Really soon. Yes. Like, like in a week. In a week. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Can you believe it? I really can't believe it. No. It makes my head spin. 
Yep, this is when the montage music would start playing right now. Da, da, remember that other really And it would just be us. Yeah, and it would be like us sitting in our house for the last year because we haven't been able to go anywhere <laughs> God, or meet anybody or anything. But Yes, right? So, yeah. Uh, we're going to have a giveaway. I don't know. We haven't sussed out all the details, but um, I think we're going to give away a year of patreon patreon for one person yep which is really exciting yep and give some money away to charities charity and Mm -hmm. maybe people we still have keychains those amazing keychains Mm -hmm. we still have a merch store which i forget about sometimes yes we do i need to figure out some like merch and yeah merch would be great but not that one design that doesn't print well (laughs) that's why we take that down yeah our merch fizzled out because one of the products didn't come out as great as we want them to so. yeah i'll get on it I'll anyway it keep your eyes open for a cool giveaway it's gonna be cool you're cool you're cool these guys are cool we're all cool and yeah. if you want to meet other cool oh i do have one more thing i almost forgot um the sweet sweet person reach out from the country of C- cyprus is that a oh, country yeah. yes yeah. from cyprus <laughs> Which, I don't. I just sat for a while last night and thought about the fact that somebody's listening to us in fucking Cyprus. You know, I saw one of those like weird chart emails we get where they tell yeah. us where we are uh, like number twenty six in Cyprus for true crime or something. Like, so, we're not only do we have a listener, we're charting in Cyprus. <laughs> so, <laughs> so cool. It's so cool. So, uh, I don't have any. I don't have any real details about this person, but they are f- female who likes other females and lives in cyprus and likes true crime and would like to connect with other females who like females in cyprus and that that like true crime so if you're listening to this and you live in cyprus and you would like to make a friend slash maybe kiss somebody eventually consensually Mm -hmm. um send us a message i just thought it was so sweet i guess it's hard to meet other queer people in cyprus so we're we're here to help when cyprus is i'm just looking it's a tiny little island in off the coast. Yeah, off the yeah. coast of Lebanon near like Beirut. Right. Shoot over a little bit and there's Cyprus. Right. Um so yeah. Other Cyprus listeners? Yeah. Any friend? queer any queer female Cyprus listeners? Yeah. Student, so I'm assuming kind of twenties would yeah. be my guess. Yeah. I don't know. Not that you have to be the same age. My wife is 13 years older than me, and we're very compatible. <laughs> Hence, our age is timeless. Legal gay marriage. Yeah, it's bullshit. What they say? I don't know. They do say age is timeless. Oh, because good. That, yeah, that's a very common thing that people say. Age is timeless. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. That I was like, am I getting one of those very common phrases wrong right now? You are. I've never heard that in my life. I'm, I'm kind of making fun of you. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, really? It's something that people say. It doesn't make any sense. No. It does it? Age is timeless. I mean, I guess technically, no. No. It's t- age is aged. It's, age is age timed. Is definitely age is timed. definitely timed. So what, what am I thinking of? Uh, age age, is. age is just but a number. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> age is but a number. <laughs> Oh, and the new saying is aged oh, is shoot. timed AF. It's very timed. <laughs> it's timed down to the minute, but down to the to, to the number. That's the whole oh, reason shit. we invented numbers, I think. Uh, anyway, I gotta, go. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we, that person found us. I thought of it because they found us on Instagram, which is where all of our BFFs oh, yeah. hang out with us. But you could also hang out with us on Facebook and Twitter at They Will Kill. You can go to our website, theywillkill.com. You can always email us at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, rate, review, subscribe. We've got yep. some good ones coming in. Yeah, they've been rolling Keep in. Keep them and in. Appreciate it so much. I know. Soon we're going to have like a whole 200 reviews, which feels pretty legit. We're getting there. Yeah. Uh, thank you to AJ Bergantz for your music. I thank saw, so I got to much. FaceTime with the babies today oh Oh my god give me a break they are so cute they have the perfectest roundest heads of course they do aj Mm -hmm. and sandra would never make a pointy headed baby no not for a second i'd still Um, love it if they did me too uh and remember 
Um, oh, poof I've been thinking is lately. My doofus. <laughs> poof is my doofus. Poof is my doofus. What have you been thinking about lately? Um, I've just been thinking about the fact that I, I believe that there is more good than bad in this world based solely on the fact that people don't steal tips very much. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we just don't yeah. do it. Hey, well, that's it's so kind rotten. of the even like probably serial killers don't steal tips. Yeah, well, hopefully you know, not. They're probably too busy stealing lives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> but it is kind of a weird phenomenon mm-hmm. when you really think about it. And yeah. it's you know, other countries don't tip very much. It's not really a thing mm-hmm. as much in other countries. So. It's just the United States of America in all of our fucked up glory has just, just decided cash on the table. Yes. Nobody messes with Nobody's going to touch it. <laughs> Nobody's watching. You're still not going to touch that wad no. of cash. No, there are, there are rules, right? Isn't that kind of yeah. crazy, but also great that we that just leave it alone. We just leave it alone. You know, what would be better? What? Just to pay our wait staff more <laughs> oh god wait staff makes so much fucking money are you kidding no, they make true. so much money they're like i'm thinking of, of like only... the, i'm thinking of the waitress on at bob evans or whatever you know? oh yeah yeah if you're yeah. working at bob evans in indiana you're not getting tipped you're getting ja- nope. you're getting ripped you're getting quarters uh, yeah if you're lucky yeah you're getting the change yeah i'm not but... thinking like high-end fancy restaurants no i mean anything no. above a bob evans in the midwest though you're making pretty good cash you're making uh-huh. you make a lot of money it's, and it's funny, too, because Laura was a waitress for years while she was relaunching her art career and made, like, probably more money than we make right now. And we're constantly <laughs> like, God, isn't it just weird that, like, in France, it's a revered profession, as it should be, mm-hmm. and you make, you can make so much money, but just nobody wants to do that job because it's an ego thing, and that's right. insane. And we're constantly like, maybe we should just wait. No, we can't do it. Well, that's can't hard do work, it too it's so it really hard. is and i have a terrible memory for that kind of, yeah i'm a terrible waitress <laughs> no, i'd have to like write everything out longhand <laughs> <laughs> i'm a terrible waitress i did it for sadie and i worked at a pizza restaurant in high school and we I didn't did it have for, to like, take orders three months no we didn't <laughs> i was so bad at it so uh, awkward anyway we love anyway, you guys we love you don't steal tips and nope. be good yep and, and age is timeless age is timeless Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.